we started out, us five children, at Great Cullen Bridge. They say when it was rebuilt in 1815, it was renamed Wellington Bridge, after the hero of Waterloo that year. Below the bridge was a long expanse of grassy keys where we paid our boat fee of a pound. We were thus provided with a rowing boat for the summer. As we paddled upstream, we passed the swimming pool club on our right, a building for male and female swimmers. The water at that point was said to be six foot deep, so to be a club member, you had to be a swimmer to cross the barrow. We were lucky as we loved to swim from summer holidays, so the barrow held no fears for us. Our companions on the water were the birds, moorhead, grey, heron, kingfisher and otters, of course. As for swans, we met far too many. The barrow is a navigable waterway. It was at one time the route of an important commercial barge traffic, now almost deserted. Its weirs and lock systems became a familiar sight as we paddled our rowing boat. The locks and adjoining cottages had their fascination, where the smoke from a lockhouse chimney swirled round like the blue feather of a lady's hat, to quote Thomas Hardy. This often enough to bring us knocking at the lockhouse door. Most of the lockhouse keepers were gone then. One or two, with a key, offered to work the lock for us. Our destination was not big. On those long, hot summer days, it was a joy to swim and picnic there, where fish could be seen below the weir. On our way home between Megany and Carlo, we crossed two weirs and two rivers that joined the barrow from the east, the Greece and the Lure. They had been spanned by bridges to let the barge horses cross them. We could see the Carlo sugar factory. Before we knew it, we were gliding under the old stone bridge beneath the castle once more, ready for another day.